afternoon, Robert. How are you doing today? Good, John. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. And welcome to Turilin Films. And we're going to talk about the exciting news that Airbud is coming to Disney+. Plus. How do you feel about that? I feel great about it. You know, I think the timing is awesome. It's the first time we've had all of our, our franchise reunited together in one spot. So it's got the five Air Bud movies now, we and then the and then the nine Air Buddies movie and Santa Claus. <laughs> as well. So you know, it, it, this is my favorite stuff to talk about. We made Air Bud twenty five years ago. It stood the test of time. It's one of those special movies. I can see by your age and everything else you saw it as a kid. You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know you cried when you they told Buddy to go away. You were excited. The pudding cup scene got you. I mean, I know exactly what. And then of course the the basketball is super fun and, and all that. So it's very much uh, something that I want to introduce um, to the the millennials who are having kids, their kids now, and and you know it, it just stands the test of time because it's a movie about something that that you know. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter who it is, professional basketball players, somebody I meet in China, you know, sire bud, got a gold retriever as a kid, to you know, a, a guy that I was talking uh, about somebody else like that, you know, who grew up in a foster home, and you know, he, it, the story was about a kid that lost his dad, and you know, and uh, met this dog, and they both saved each other and 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 lifted each other up, and so that that was his solace, you know, being an only kid in a, in a foster home, so. You know, like, so it's stories I hear all the time and, you know, we want, I want to keep the, keep the love going, you know? No. Yeah. I, I can imagine. The thing is that uh, the funny thing is that you, you do mention it and yes, I did watch, I think <laughs> the, like all the original Air Bud movies, I did get to see them in theaters. And um, I remember as a kid, like super excited to watch them. And I actually, you mentioned as well, I actually got uh, when I was, I think 10 12 i did get my first uh not my first dog but one of the dogs that i had as a pet was a golden retriever as well <laughs> so, so it, it, it it all intertwines on what air Bud did so i wanted to ask you robert so what 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 it inspired you to you know to start this whole air Bud franchise yeah, I like to I like to tell you it was a big grand plan, but it really it wasn't. I was I was literally just watching David Letterman's Stupid Petrix, and I saw this dog playing basketball um, on the show. I was like, "What? Like, is that real?" You know. So I called up, and you know, I'd made twenty two movies before, never a family movie. Um, and there's a whole story behind that um, as well. But but uh, and I, I've been looking to make family movies because I was kind of I didn't want to make you know action movies. I didn't want to make you know, thrillers anymore. I want, you know, I, I've always been a family guy. That's what I care about. And then I, so I called up the producers and they gave me the name of Kevin DeChico, who is the the dog owner who'd been on it. And he came to my office and he set up a, a real, you know, regulation size hoop out in our parking lot. And I, I, I felt the basketball was a real basketball. And then for the next, they're like, I'm not, not kidding, like an hour and a bit, you know, people you think it was like he was spoon feeding him the ball. No, no, he was playing basketball with him. Kevin was like this <laughs> is a crazy athlete, and he he just trained his dog. He wasn't a dog trainer, really. I mean, he was just a, a guy that loved his dog and would take him everywhere and maybe take him to parties or whatever. And then uh and yeah, so the parking lot was full of kids by the end of it. And I was going, I just had this chills in me. I knew that movie was gonna get made. And I just knew it. I just knew it was gonna be something special. But then, then the world knocks you down. Then you go to every single studio, including Disney, and they turn you down. <laughs> so, so, you know, you think, well, am I crazy now? Like, you know, and then, and then the script was so good. And um, the writers, Paul Tannacy and, and Aaron Mendelson, and then Charlie Martin Smith, the director, did such an amazing job with it. It was just like, it was just, and Kevin Zagers is the actor. They've all gone on to win Academy Awards, be top directors and writers, you know. And so it was just something really special. It was it was a lightning in the bottle moment in, in terms of not just the hook, but also the the performances, direction, the writing um, of that movie. And it just stood the test of time. It has real gravitas. It really it's about something. Otherwise, you don't remember it, right? Like you yeah, don't remember sure. when you had can candy, but you remember when you went to that great restaurant that had the best you know pasta that you've ever had in your life. You know, so you know it's kind of like that's what that's what happened. And, and, and just from that point on. You know, we we took it to Disney after the fact. I showed four scenes to then the head of the studio, Joe Roth, and 
Dick Cook was there as well. And as soon as we as a play, showed the dog first time it played basketball, I showed, obviously they want to see that. I showed the pudding cup scene and I showed the scene when they told uh, Josh to, to go away, or the, Josh told the dog to go away. I never got to the fourth scene, which is showing all sorts of basketball playing stuff. And they just stopped. They said, you know, I'm about to cry. So we want this movie. <laughs> so literally it was the basketball hook, but it wasn't, it was really the, the, the heart behind the movie that really uh, caused Disney after the fact to, to license it as, and distribute it. No, that's, so. that's amazing. So <laughs> one, never one, <laughs> no, I, I imagine, I imagine. So do you, Going, going like way back to the to like the original films, like the I, if I'm not mistaken, I think they're like around four that are with the with Airbud, the the big dog. Um, yeah. Do you have any like any memories that till this day, uh, twenty twenty three, um, do you still take to heart or or that you still like say like, hey, uh, this happened when we will fil- when we were filming this movie. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any memory like that or many memories? I, I have many, but uh, you know, I think that the, like, look, the first day, like you never know, like a dog on set. I never worked with an animal on set. I was like, when the cameras go, can't, there's a lot of stuff going on in the movie set. There's stuff falling down, people everywhere, you know, it's craziness going on. Well, I'm like, I remember the first day on set, I'm like, how's the dog going to react? It's not like he's a, you know, trained by Hollywood trainers, you know? And uh, we were doing some some scene where the dog had to had to like you know emote and have give you the looks and the music takes over from there right because the dog's not really thinking about that. But what it was the trainer had a tennis ball and he was like he couldn't and he, and he couldn't get the dog to kind of focus on the tennis ball. The dog was doing this and looking. Literally, his head was going like this, and we were like, and I, what it was is that the the tra- the, the trainer Kevin had a tennis ball behind him was a kid tossing a basketball out. And so he was so obsessed with basketball and bigger. You want all he wanted to do was play. He didn't care about the camera. Then he got, I was like, shit, what's going on? This could take us forever. <laughs> and then it was just we were like, uh, can you stop? Uh, can you go hide that basketball over there, please? And after that, it was like, okay, now the ball. This is the only ball that's here. So now I'm interested again. So, so that was the and you know, you see the scenes where the dog's literally playing basketball. It was like at first we were the director and and uh, the the consultant for the basketball had set up all these plays and everything else. And we were like, the dog is like, the dog doesn't care about it. He just wants to play. So in the end of the day, we're like, I remember the director of photography going, okay, I'm going to put a track here, three cameras over here. And we're just going to put these kids together. And they're just going to play basketball. And we just shot all day. The dog literally playing basketball with the kids and the dog plays basketball. It's no bullshit. It's absolutely organic and beyond belief. But you know, uh, it, that, so those are my memories. And I, and I, you know, there's always things that go wrong, you know, like, but, but basically the happy memories are really just kind of like what a special uh, moment that was. And I remember when I first met Kevin, he had never really done anything as an actor, Kevin Ziggers. And we saw him on an audi- audition. And I was just like, oh my God, he's, he's from like uh, somewhere in Northern Ontario in some small town, not a Hollywood kid at all. And our casting director had found him on a tape. And I'm like, we were looking at him going, oh my God, this guy is the most incredible actor. How can this be? You know, he's not a Hollywood family. He's not around. So, you know, just stuff like that. I always say that, you know, the hardest movies to make are always the ones that are going to be the best. And, And there's just, because the ones that are easy to make, it usually means that, in my mind, anyways, I'm not like trying to torture myself, although it, it, it usually means that you're not pushing the envelope or something, you know, you either have, you know, you just, you just haven't had, you, you know, like diamonds don't get created by, you know, without pressure. There's got to be a little pressure. And there was pressure all the time making that movie, you know, we never had enough money. We're making it independently. It was made for four and a half million dollars. It wasn't made for, you know, like that movie, to, you know, if a studio made that movie, it'd be, 35 40 million dollars to make you know even back then so it was it was a it was a challenge and it was just a really you know special time you know so i guess that's really what i would say about it that that's amazing you know um i want to ask because um i'm a recent i'm not that recent of a father right <laughs> mm. um 
my my son is uh one year uh, and i think it's uh, around four uh three months old but yeah i wanted to ask you you know uh, I'm, a, i'm a family man as well but i wanted to ask you being the fact that you've been in that um in that ambience of family films for so long uh being especially with airbud how do you compare what family films were then to what family films are now do you have any thoughts of like comparing what how was airbud like before uh how was airbud a family film then in the in those times in hollywood comparing to what we're getting now as family films um well i think you know making family films has always been difficult to do and 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 especially making something that's a and and it still is today so nothing's changed really in fact it's become almost more difficult because you can put out another marvel movie and get you know and parents will let their so the, i think the real thing has changed really is just what parents will allow their kids to watch right so and that create so it used to be like especially mom used to curate you know what the kids watch and and so you know, i'm not saying they don't but it's, it's you have less control as a parent nowadays you you know that like everybody's every kid's got a tablet mm -hmm. or, you know so i think that i i think that and nothing's really changed and what kids want to watch is not changed you know so um what how people think about what kids i mean obviously society has changed right you know and but you know i i don't you know to me a family movie is for all families of you know all different you know everybody wants the same things for their children it doesn't matter what the makeup of the family is religiously or or um or you know one parent or you know or two parents are like the the families are, have always been dynamic so it doesn't really change you know a kid wants a uh, kid wants to see things that um see their life in 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 the best possible manner and really care about what they're so I think that the responsibility, the thing that has, has changed is really just that we have to be more, in, we have to, not that we didn't, but it wasn't, it, people weren't as conscious about inclusivity uh, back then, you know, like, and, and, and but now it's, it, that's super important to, to us. So I think, um, I think that's what's changed, but our, basically the values haven't changed. You know, you're a parent, you want, to, your parents want the same thing for you that you want for your, your child now, you know, so So I don't think anything's really changed other than it's other than to say things have just stayed the same, but we do have, it's much harder. You have one, you know, we have five different places where you can see something now, more or less, you know, okay. I, I, on, with the asphalt channel. So it, it homogenizes things a little bit. And so creating something unique, like everybody, look, everybody was not easy to make. Everybody turned us down. So it wasn't like, oh, it was easier to make back then than it is now it's it's whenever you're making a family mo movie you have to it, it it has it rises to a much higher um uh a high, higher standard than any other kind of movie and okay. that's just the truth you know and you did mention uh earlier um in our conversation that uh airbud was uh was in hollywood train so How, how did how did that work out because you know usually back yeah. in back in uh, you know back in those times were um using uh animals as as actors you know they most all of mostly all of them were hollywood trained how do you get to to have um airbutt um work out all these scenes not being trained <laughs> Well, they, you know, I would say it was a savant. It was this, it was like a dog that I've never seen. In fact, you know, everybody, the, the original buddy um, passed away after the movie was released and dogs aren't dragons. They don't live forever, you know? So, so, you know, the next movies, it was five dogs that were required to do the same thing that one dog did. They were all Hollywood trained. So it just tells you, Kevin obviously did something special with the dog, but that dog was very special. And I'm, you know, I'm blessed to have been able to work with, an animal that was so frigging savantly talented and in and, and so but even the best hollywood trainers it would take five of them to do what the original airbud did in the first movie okay. so that i mean that, that, that doesn't have i mean i didn't know that you know i mean i mean the ignorance is bliss right so i was on the set for the first time with the original talk i'm like anybody else who knew what they were doing would have said that is crazy that you're going with one dog what happens if the dog can't perform that day or whatever nah it was a never it was every day no problem wow you know, that's having that's the best amazing. time ever yeah that's but, you know, so uh-huh and like you have golden retrievers right you know so 
they're the happiest dogs. They yes. just want to do things. They love to be with their people. They love to be with any people, actually. You got a ball? Okay. You're my friend now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I have one final question, Robert. So uh, yeah. we have all of the films are available at, at Disney Plus. So if you could um at least provide your at least your top three of all those films, what would be your top three that you would recommend families to just watch off the bat when they sit down to watch them? Oh my God. They're all so special to me. <laughs> you know? So it's like asking which child you like the best, but I, I would say for me, the original air about is just, it is, it is uh, what spawned everything. And there's just nothing else like it. I today I've never seen a family movie that I think is, is more unique and more special. That's just my opinion, you know? Um, so, and, and, you know, so that is a, a must. I, I think that um, if I go down the lines of my favorites, and uh, I think that there's some, and to me, a lot of it's messaging too. Like, where do I really feel connected? Um, I think, uh, I think the uh, Airbud Symphony Fetch is has a real. There's something really about that one that really works. So that's, and then I think the and I directed all the Air Buddies movies, so <laughs> here, so I don't have, so I love Molly, <laughs> obviously. But the the uh, I think that uh, um, the original Air Buddies movie is super special. I think Snow Buddies is super special. That's the one we did, with, which will never be done again. Uh, Golden Retriever puppies, uh, you know, and and, 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 and uh, dog sledding, and they really did. It was insane. And then uh, and then uh, I think that some of the um, you know, Spooky Buddies, which is coming out on Halloween, is really is a great show. I mean, I love them all, so it's kind of hard for me. <laughs> uh, but I, I, and then I do think the Santa Claus movies are really special as Christmas movies, you know. And I think there's because they, you know, we, I, I you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily think of myself as a guy that does musicals, but there's a musical moments and all those, and, and there's just something really special about those movies too, the Santa Claus ones. So, I mean, I like them all, but you know, I have my favorites too. You know, every parent says that they love them all the same, but they really don't. <laughs> Robert, um, uh, thank you very much for giving us the time to talk yeah. about Airbud and the story behind the original uh, films and the other films as well. Thank you very much for giving us your time. And um, for everybody that's watching us, they're all going to be available um, at Disney Plus. So thank you very much, Robert. Yeah, man. And then your, your child will be watching our, we're, we're doing a 3D animated uh, series coming uh, out next year, which is called Air, Air Buddy, Air Bud when he was a puppy. So oh. I think, so we're introducing your kids to uh, Air Bud as a puppy when they're, they're not next year, because a year and a half, but, but two and two and a half of that year, but, but by the time it's three or four. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Amazing. Can't <laughs> wait to, to watch it. So thank you very much once again, thank Robert, you. and and hope that everybody that sits down to watch uh, Airbud enjoys them as well at Disney Plus. Yeah, man. Thank you.